morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are today. Well, this is James Bowman III again with our marital and family encouragement. Hashtag M-A-F-E. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, our short talk is going to be entitled, What Now? What Now? You know, at some point, this COVID-19 will be a memory. And we will reminisce about how this virus changed our lives and how we were sequestered at home. We'll talk about how many times we washed our hands a day. And more importantly, we'll talk about how we looked out for each other. We'll discuss the fact that church members and friends who we were acquainted with, we got closer because we began to understand that life is not promised. And the question that is ever present in my mind is what now? You know, you know, after the crisis is gone and, and some normalcy begins to come back, what then? You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have believed for a long time, and I know I'm not alone in this belief, that uh, when crises come, it affords us the opportunity to change. It affords us the opportunity to do some introspection to determine what can I do better? Have I been kind to all of God's children? My mortality and my destiny are ever present and indelibly etched in my mind because the question is, what am I doing? All are human under the sight of God. And for me to walk around believing, believing that I am better than you, simply because of the color of my skin or, or because of my gender. Really? Jesus died for all, and I'm a sinful individual, and he died to cover my sin. And so I categorically reject the notion that I'm better than you simply because my skin is different or because of my gender or any other reason God died for everybody. And so it is my prayer, along with many of you, that this crisis that we, were go- we are going through can be used as a jumping point, as an instantiator, to help us to take a look at ourselves. Are we treating our children right? Are we providing every opportunity or are we are or, or are we all about gluttony and how much money can I make? Will we begin to understand the true worth of an individual? Not, not how many cars he or she has, how many houses he or she has. Nothing wrong with money. But when that becomes our sole purpose in life, the word of God says that the love, not not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Nothing wrong with money because a lot of good can be done with money. But when, when we make money the central focus and it becomes our God, there will be problems. One of the prayers that I've had, and I'll close with this point, is that God make me a millionaire. Why? Because I am compelled, along with many of you, to be what I call a blessing conduit. I want to be in the position to 
bless my family, to bless other families. And, and I would just pray that God bring a need. And I hear, uh, oh, so-and-so needs a car and just go buy one. They don't have to know where it came from because it's not about uplifting me or you. It's about blessing God's people. And there needs to be no glory for me or you. All glory needs to go to Jehovah because he would have been the one that provided the funds for me to purchase the car for that individual. It's a prayer of mine, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, I want to take care of my family. Um, make sure my wife is okay. You know, all of us are getting older. Make sure um, things are straight. But I, I have a desire, along with many of you, that I've, I've spoken with, either online or in person, to bless the disenfranchised, to provide feeding venues, to provide housing. The Word of God makes it clear. That at the proverbial pearly gates, and we're asking God why we can't get in. He'll say, listen, uh, when I was hungry, he didn't feed me. He won't be asking how many houses I had. Nothing wrong with that, but he won't be asking that. How many cars did I have? When, when I was hungry, did you feed me? You know, when I, when I needed clothing, did you... Uh, did you just open another bank account or buy more stocks? Or did you come and provide clothing? Yeah. Hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, this crisis will cause us to gain more character and exercise our better angels. Let's just have prayer right quick. I'm just compelled to, to pray more as we've been going through some challenges. So I'm going to pray for you. Let's bow our heads. God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we're having a tough time down here right now with this virus. And a lot of us have been sequestered in our homes. But God, we thank you for the time to do introspection and think about what's important. What's important. God, we pray that through this experience, we will be better Christians. We will be more kind. We will look at everyone as a child of God. We pray for our families. We pray for the first responders, God, and all of the uh, health uh, individuals that are working in the health vocation. God, keep them safe. God, put a he hedge of protection around them as they take care of your people. We thank you, God, and we know you're worthy. And we know you're still on your throne despite this calamity. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, my people. God bless you. You have a great day. And we will talk with you later. Bye-bye. Let me show you. Let me show you where to go.